What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be going over some details on our electric build for this Technical Tuesday episode. This is something that we get a lot of questions about and a lot of requests for more information about our electric motor, our batteries, and just our overall electric build and how it's working out for us. This is our boat now. Oh my god. <laughs> Just a heads up, this video is going to be a lot of me talking and a lot of information coming your way, so hopefully I don't bore you guys too much and you find the information useful and informative. Also, I'm not here to debate whether diesel or electric is better on a sailboat, I'm only here to talk about our build. Both diesel and electric have advantages and disadvantages, and going with one or the other really is a personal decision based on which one of those advantages or disadvantages is most important to you. First things first, let's talk about the motor. Now we have a 10 kilowatt brushless PMAC motor, that stands for Permanent Magnet Alternating Current. It's made by a company called Electric Yacht and it's their Quiet Torque 10 model. It's roughly equivalent to a 20 horsepower diesel and our boat actually came with an 18 horsepower diesel that we removed so it's actually a little bit more powerful than the diesel that was there before it. And at full power it can push the boat at its hull speed of 6 knots. We went with this particular company for two reasons. The first one being I think Electric Yacht is the most affordable option for an inboard motor meant for a sailboat and two, the motor is about as plug and play as you can get for a motor install. It's meant to replace a diesel in a sailboat, so it's really straightforward and it requires no modification in most sailboats. Now overall, we're happy with the motor. It does exactly what it's intended to do, but the only thing we would do in hindsight is maybe add a little bit more power. Our boat's displacement is actually on the upper limit of what this motor is designed for, so basically we're in between whether we should have gotten the 10 kilowatt or the 20 kilowatt model. Now naturally, the 10 kilowatt is cheaper, and because of that we ended up going with the more affordable option, but the 20 kilowatt motor would have been nice. This isn't a huge deal, but it means our boat gets to hull speed at full throttle, that's 10 kilowatts of power at 200 amps at 48 volts. Now if we had gone with the 20 kilowatt model, our boat would reach hull speed at half throttle instead of full throttle. The numbers would still be the same at half throttle, it'd be 10 kilowatts, 200 amps, 48 volts. However, we'd have all that extra power just in case we needed to use it. We wouldn't be able to sustain it for very long, however, it'd be nice to know that it's there just in case of emergency. Now, motors are pretty simple. You can easily get an appropriate sized motor for your intended use, and it's going to work for you. It's the energy storage that gets a little more challenging and a little more complicated. Now aboard Freebie, we have 12 12 volt, 100 amp hour, Battleborn lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're wired so that we have three strings of four batteries in series, then those strings are wired in parallel. This actually gives us 300 amp hours at 48 volts. The total power of the battery bank is 14.4 kilowatt hours. It's wired as one big 48 volt bank, mainly because the motor is 48 volts. We decided to have one single bank for both the house and the motor because it was a simpler solution than having multiple banks aboard. In our opinion, simpler most of the time is better. So, the battery bank directly feeds the motor, but the batteries go through a 48 to 12 volt DC to DC converter before supplying the house and the electronics aboard. Charging is accomplished via our two 300 watt 24 volt Renogy panels wired in series to create 48 volts pass through a Victron Energy 48 volt charge controller to the batteries. We also have a 3000 watt Victron Energy Quattro inverter charger that allows us to plug into shore power and also creates 120 volts AC power to supply 120 volt AC outlets aboard. All of this is properly grounded to a copper grounding plate below the waterline, as per the instructions in this book. Now, this is Nigel Calder's Boat Owner's Mechanical and Electrical Manual. I basically read this book cover to cover before I even touched anything electrical on freebie, and I suggest you guys do the same. Now, we chose lithium power for our batteries instead of traditional lead acid or AGM for multiple reasons. One, lithium batteries can actually be discharged 100%, which means you have double the usable power of most other batteries. Two, it's okay for them to be in a partial state of charge. You don't have to keep them topped off like lead acid, and you don't have to float charge them. Three, and this is a big one for us, they way significantly less than other batteries. They are about a fifth of the weight of lead acid batteries. Four, another big one is that they last way longer than traditional marine batteries. They have a lifespan of between 3,000 to 5,000 cycles and they're almost completely recyclable. The actual lithium used in a lithium iron phosphate battery is 100% recyclable, which is huge because it means you don't have to mine more lithium to make a new battery from the old one. Reason five and probably the most important reason we chose lithium over other chemistries is the C rating. If you're not familiar with what a C rating is, basically it's 
the rate at which you can safely discharge or recharge a battery. And it's really important for an electric boat because an electric motor at full power is most likely going to require a lot of current and those batteries need to be able to supply that amount of current. And if they can't, that's a problem. Now, Battleborne batteries have a C rating of one. And in order to determine the amount of current that you can pull out of them continuously, you take that C rating and you multiply it by the amp hours of your battery bank. So since we have a 300 amp hour bank, 300 times one, our mass continuous current that we can pull out of our bank is 300 amps. Now the C rating of lead acid in AGMs is typically much less. It's usually a fraction or a decimal and it's less than one. And if you try to draw too much current from them, you're gonna either damage the battery or you're gonna deplete them prematurely. Now essentially lithium batteries are the only choice for an electric boat in my opinion because of the C rating. You need batteries like lithium that have a high C rating so that you can pull out as much charge as you need in an emergency or just to go cruising. However, all that being said, traditional AGM or lead acid batteries can work fine for a diesel powered boat as long as you're not drawing too much power from them too fast. Now we went with lithium batteries for all the reasons I just listed, but we went with Battleborne batteries specifically because of the quality of their batteries, how advanced and how safe the internal BMS, which is the internal battery monitoring system on each battery is, and the fact that they come with a 10 year warranty, which means they really stand behind their products and they'll replace your batteries if anything goes wrong with them in 10 years. It's awesome. It's, it's unheard of. No other battery company does that. So we really like that these batteries are gonna last us a long time. Currently, there's nothing we'd change about our battery setup. We absolutely love the batteries. We obviously use them to run the motor, but we also use them to run our refrigerator, our power tools, our instruments, our induction cooktop to cook food. They can even run an air conditioner for a day or so before needing to be recharged. I mean, anything you plug into our boat is basically just gonna run. And that's not something you could say about lead acid or AGM because of that pesky C rating. Now, I wanna talk about how the electric boat is working for us in the real world, since we've been in the water for a while now. In general, we're very happy with the electric setup that we installed, and we would certainly do it again. We went electric for the reason that we didn't wanna to have to go to a fuel dock to fuel up anywhere. We wanted to be self-sufficient, we wanted to generate our own power. The only downside is that we motor slowly to conserve power. We can go fast in an emergency, up to our whole speed of six knots. However, we can only do that for about an hour and a half, but that's enough time to get us out of an emergency if need be. But we never really go that fast because we're never in a hurry and if we were we would have bought a power boat. Basically the upside of never having to fill a diesel tank, the simplicity of an electric setup and being able to generate our own power from the sun, it, it all outweighs the fact that we have to motor slowly sometimes. In practice we've never had any power issues. Our battery bank usually lives at about 90% power. The lowest we've ever discharged it was 50%. The 600 watts of solar that we have can put back into the batteries about 20% per day. So even if we ran out of power we could anchor somewhere and just sit around for a few days and charge up. A lot of people ask us about our range under motor and this is highly, highly dependent on speed and also whether the sun's out or not, but a good rule of thumb is probably to say we get about 45 nautical miles of range at an economical speed of three to four knots. That's assuming no power input from the sun. The faster you go, you end up using a lot more power. It's a non-linear relationship between speed and power consumption. Because of this, going full speed at six knots, we'd only be able to go about 10 nautical miles. But at one to two knots and in full sun, our range is virtually infinite. When we're under motor, we try to find a good balance between speed, power consumption, and input from the sun. Obviously, if there's wind, we sail. The motor's only auxiliary. The main form of propulsion on a sailboat is the sails. One of the cool things we didn't anticipate is actually motor sailing in really light conditions where we'd only be going two knots or three knots under sail alone. We can bump up the motor power a little bit, get us that extra knot so that we're going three or four knots and still not be drawing anything from the batteries. It's actually a really cool feature. And you still feel like you're sailing because you can't even hear that the motor's on when you're running it at a very low power. I think that's enough of me rambling in one video, but I really hope you guys enjoyed the extra details about our electric setup as well as how it's been working out for us. As always guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. Also, I'm planning on having a DIY video out later in the week, probably Thursday or Friday, so stay tuned for that. See you guys. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson Come sit here with me by the fire